testing. Oh, it does work. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to the graphic design career panel today. We're so happy and pleased to have you here. We have uh, five graduates from our MCC graphic design program with us today to share their experiences in the workplace, what it was like after uh, leaving MCC and uh, where they're at now. So um, before I have them talk a little bit about themselves, I'd also like to introduce uh, my colleague and program coordinator Ed Hogan over here. Uh, just so you, you know, when he starts asking questions, he's, he's part of our program as well. Uh, he's on sabbatical this fall, but he'll be back in the spring. So, without any further ado, I'm going to ask our panelists to sort of uh, introduce themselves to our group of students. We have a couple different classes here. We have a section of my graphic design. I know we have a graphic design class from Great Path Academy, and there may be another um, art class from MCC here as well. So, just to give you guys an idea of who you're talking to, and uh, just tell us a little bit about yourselves. And you can go in any order you want, or we could just start at one end and go down. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> uh, my name is Michelle Holcomb. Uh, I've been an attendee here at MCC uh, on and off for way too many years to uh, say. But I'm currently working for an uh, advertising agency in Glastonbury. I'm a production artist, a graphic designer, and I also oversee all the computers, software, hardware updates, work with an outside technology firm to schedule major upgrades. All right. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm Nick Artemiak. I work at the New Britain Museum of American Art in the marketing department. Uh, I'm their interactive web developer and, and designer. Uh, so I do a lot of the tech stuff there. Uh, and I also play a, a good part in a lot of the print media that we do there. I'm uh, Mike Carmen. I graduated um, here from MCC last semester. Um, I work for Systematic Automation. They're a company in Farmington that make um, industrial screen printing machines. And I do everything from minor web design to working print media with um, advertisements and magazines, postcards that send out to people, stuff like that. Hello. Uh, my name is Brett Canedo. I am a graduate of the Hartford Art School. I'm a graduate here, and I work for myself as a freelancer. Um, I primarily work at Mince and Hope, with, which is an ad agency in Avon, and yeah, that's it. Hi, my name is Mara Carpenter. I am a graphic designer at Quas Media, which is a advertising and publication no, production company uh, in town, and I am also the newest colorist at uh, Black Mask Publishing um, for comics. Um, okay, so we'll just start off with our uh, group of questions here, and then we'll leave a little time at the end, or um, I think if you have a question, I'm going to say this right now, if, as someone speaking, if you have a burning question, sometimes it's hard to remember, right? Uh, if you wait to the end, just raise your hand and, and we'll, we'll throw it right out there, okay? So, um, what lead or, okay, so, too, it's what led, what I led, sorry, yeah, <laughs> I did the same thing, <laughs> <laughs> what led or attracted you to pursue a career in graphic design, and so, we'll just start, and again, anywhere, you can jump right in, all right, fine, um, <laughs> um I was just sort of always an artistic person. Um, I have been drawing since I could hold a pencil. Um, yeah, closer. Okay. Okay, good, yeah, okay. Um, and really what I wanted to do was work in comics, which is what I'm getting into now, but graphic design is just the sweetest gig in terms of commercial work. It's, it's what pays the bills so that you can do any artistic pursuits you actually want to do. So, yeah, that's what that's what got me into it. Yeah, and I actually kind of second that notion because uh, when I first started, I was into fine art, oil painting. That's what I wanted. 
do. And uh, it's like, you know what? I don't think it's going to make that much money. Well, maybe now I'd probably say that it actually can. But um, when I went to decide on a career, I looked for a catalog here. And graphic designer really stuck out. So I went for that. Um, yeah. I, I was actually in the same boat as well. Um, I uh, started uh, doing like art in uh, high school and stuff, and then um, kind of touched on graphic design in high school. There was um, one course where we were introduced to uh, um, InDesign and Photoshop, and I was kind of playing around with that, making things, and uh, found that enjoyable. And then um, realized that you know I wouldn't always be able to have a stable income uh, just doing fine art, so I was kind of looking for another creative outlet. Um, in order to pursue for a job while doing fine art on the side. So I went to graphic design for that. Um, I'm a little different. I started off with uh, graffiti. Graffiti was, and the hip hop culture was a huge influence for me. Um, I think audio production got me into graphic design first because I started doing CD covers when I was in high school. And um, doing graffiti and whatnot, and actually I was studying typography just in a more urban, unstructured form. And then, um, actually, one of my friends thought that it would be interesting if we did graphic design together. And I had no idea what it was at the time. He's like, you want to do graphic design? I said, sure. And then I came here, and now I'm talking to you guys. Uh, for me, it started out as an interest in photography. And I started taking some photography classes here. At the same time, I took a job at one of the local newspapers and started working with the ad department. And so I started to see how the ads were created. I worked with the customers to customize their ads and started to see a great variety in what graphic design could be and thought it would be an interesting career. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go rogue off the sheet here for a moment. So do most of you still do your own artwork or what you consider to be your own artwork? You have to. Yes. Yeah. It's necessary. Um, Working in a commercial field all the time, you're constantly doing things that other people want you to do. It's, it might be a cynical way to, to see it, but it is the truth. It's boring. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always important to make sure that you also have another way to express yourself and get your creativity out for you and for you only. It, it sounds like one feeds the other, perhaps. Yeah. There's a connection there. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, briefly describe your present position and responsibilities. I, I think we've we've done that. Do we need to go back and cover that ground again? Is there anything anybody wants to add? Yeah. All right, yeah, all right. Um, so as an art director, what I do is um, on a day-to-day -day basis, I get a creative brief and somebody gives me a problem. So say they have a donut that they want to sell and they give me all the facts and special things about the donut. And then I take that information and I start thinking of concepts. Um, I start thinking of ways to present that donut to a consumer in a way that's going to entice them and make them hungry. So at the end of the day, what I'm doing is coming up with the ideas that are going to make other people act in some way, whether it's coming to a bakery, making a phone call, ordering something, you know, I'm basically working on creating the ideas and the art itself uh, in ads. Um, I am the head graphic designer at my company, um, so pretty much everything is funneled through me. Um, I have to talk to the marketing guy to talk about our clients and what they want and tell him what to ask the clients for in terms of you know, their branding and images I need and all that sort of stuff. Um, I oftentimes have to talk to clients, emailing and, and calling and arguing and <laughs> all of that fun stuff. Um, so it's, it's not just actually making the art, um, it's relegating all of those tasks. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I am pretty much the only person at my job um, with any background in graphic design. Um, so I do a lot of talking with um, the people marketing. They uh, kind of have an idea of something they want, like for instance, a uh, 
One thing I worked on fairly recently was a thank you card to send to any of our clients who have uh, bought our machines because they're, they're not cheap machines, they're pretty expensive, so it's nice to thank them for basically spending that much money on one of our products. So I spent a lot of time going back and forth with um, ideas with the marketing team, with the owner of the company, kind of establishing what we wanted to think of more specifically. Um, specific wording and stuff like that, and also just the general idea of like the tone of the visuals on the card and stuff like that. So I, I spend a lot of time talking with other people to get the ideas. Sometimes they'll even have sketches of a general feel of what they want the design to look like, and then I just kind of expand from their ideas, make the uh, final product. Uh, I pretty much do everything everybody said here in addition to I uh, oversee a lot of the computers so um, I'm doing a lot of software updates I recommend software for us sometimes uh, our clients want to present their information in a different way so recently we've expanded to some different platforms uh, go animate brain shark different ways to get the information out there that the public can access it other than just a print app so it's, uh, it, it's one of the things that's interesting about this business is there's always new technology popping up every day. And it's a challenge sometimes to keep up with it, but I think it kind of feeds your creative juices, keeps you interested when you, you know, it's not, you're not doing the same old thing every day. That kind of leads into what I do at the museum. Uh, I've recently built their website there. Uh, I have like a, my, one of my skill sets is in programming. And uh, so I did a lot of PHP and SQL backend stuff there. Um, but at the same time, it's an in-house department, and it's the museum is many different things: it's collections, it's uh, it's development. And because of that, you know, the staff isn't the number of people there. It's not a huge place, and I have I have to do a lot of things there. So as the web developer, instead of just being the guy coding it, I also had to do the design of it. You know, put that together. Um, but the thing is, also, now that that project's done, it's like I go right back to print. I'm just doing print, uh, print designs now, so. It, it sounds like communication is key, uh, both visual but also oral communication with your coworkers and clients and people that, that you're working with. Um, is there anything that else that you would emphasize to students entering graphic design? have a thick skin to not take criticism personally. Um, you may think you have submitted three of the best designs you've ever done and your client may like them. They may say, I like this and this one and this and this one, can you put them all together? Or I hate them all, but I don't know why I hate them all. So I'll go back to the drawing board. Um, you just have to kind of, it's your job to kind of pull the information out of them. They may not know what they want until they see it, yet you can visualize it. Most people aren't as visual if you're not in this business. Um, so just try to you know, work with your client. Don't take the criticism personally. It, you're gonna get knocked down occasionally. You just have to be willing to get back up there and do another design. Um, two things, we're doing a nice now. All right, two things, understand CMYK. Yes. Please, dear God. <laughs> it will make your life so much easier. Um, second thing, and I think this is the most important, do not lowball yourself yeah. in terms of your pricing. It is a huge problem in the artist community as you have these people who are, you know, they're, they're willing to work for pennies on the dollar for art that is definitely worth more. And then you have these clients who think that's acceptable. They think that that is the rate that they should be paying you because, you know, art is fun for you. It's a hobby, right? Mm -hmm. And they think they can get work for free, and it's not okay. And if everybody is working for $15 an hour, then they don't have a choice than to work for $15 an hour. I mean, to buy art for $15 an hour. So it doesn't matter what you think your art is worth, everybody thinks their art is trash and that they you know, shouldn't charge more than 
seven dollars an hour for it but you need to look at the minimum and you need to charge that because it's an issue and you deserve to be paid and you deserve to be able to eat <laughs> yeah I remember doing projects for free just they came around and I remember doing this, this poster for a band for like 20 bucks you know for their, for their show but then like you start to realize this, or I started to realize as I was going to get and meet more people that needed our, our services that it's a really, it's a really important service for companies. It, I mean, it makes break, makes right. breaks companies. You know, it communicates to their audience. It, uh, it it sets them aside from the competition. So Never it's, ever it's do valuable. anything for free. Yeah. Never. It's not. No. No. Especially if they say, "Well, this is going to look great in your portfolio." Oh my God, that is the worst thing in the world. Don't ever let them do that. Dude, I'm I'm. Mad. <laughs> this is unacceptable. We don't deserve the occasional like trash. pro bono, especially for a good cause. Oh, is, yeah. is is something different than what yes. than what we're referring to right now. But I absolutely agree. So coming from different workplaces, different environments, how do you manage that? Is there a contract in place through your employer who you're working for, or in the case of Brett, probably? You have to devise your own contract to work with clients. Yeah, um, usually if I'm working with clients, um, I need to come up with a contract, so I need to set the terms. Sometimes the client that I work for will, will present me a contract, and then I have to look it over and decide whether or not it makes sense for me. And you know, I really, at the end of the day, you want to make sure you're looking out for yourself. Um, so, but you know. Most people aren't trying to screw you over or you know pull a fast one. Most most people are, do have good intentions. They may just may not be educated as you know as you are. So it's best for you to be you know up to date on pay rates and you know know what you're worth and what your time is worth so that you can best judge how to handle contracts. And there are a lot of vehicles out there that you can find out what the going rate for freelance is in your area. Yeah. Uh, the Creative Group in Hartford posts an annual salary guide for the Connecticut area, the Printing Industry Association. So at least you're not going in there, you know, totally uneducated. You know, ask people that you know are better in the industry, you know, what are you charging? Some of your teachers might even be able to help you in that area. But I agree with Mara. You know, you start lowering your rate, you're not just hurting yourself or hurting everybody else in the industry because they're going to come to expect that. Well, if you know so and so charged fifteen dollars an hour, why would I want to pay fifty for it? it? It's a really important point. Okay, let's see. Reflecting back on your educational training, so I, I'm going to imagine that's your time here at MCC, or even if you want to bring in, I know a couple of you. Did you go to Central, Nick? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And Harvard Art School, Brett. Mike, have you gone on to four-year yet? So right out of uh, MCC, Michelle, how about you? Just no, just here. Two and year degree. Lots of other like you know seminars through different organizations yeah. and classes. Professional development. And Mara, you're a graduate from MCC, and that's it. Not that's a four-year. Yeah. Okay. I know we talked about that at, at the graduation ceremony. Whether or not you're going to go on. Um, so reflecting back on your educational training courses, co-op, professional development, what specifically have you found to be relevant and important in helping you prepare for a career in graphic design? Um, I would say that um, here at Manchester, what gave me the huge advantage was the technical skill that I learned here. Um, between, I also went to Esnantech Community College and I took a couple, I took a couple of photography classes there and digital photography and Really, we learned Photoshop, and then when I came here, I took the introduction to computer graphics uh, too and whatnot. And what we did is instead of working on on creative ideas and conceptual thinking, we actually spent a lot of time learning and mastering the programs. And I can't stress enough how important it is for you to have a strong foundation in in all the creative suite programs from Photoshop to Illustrator, InDesign, Dreamweaver, um, Flash. You know, you name it, Lightroom. You know, you should try your best to understand and know how to manage each and every single one of those. Because if you do go on to another, um, maybe into a four-year program, you'll find that some programs don't emphasize the technical skill as much as they emphasize conceptual thinking. And you might have an upper hand at creating your ideas maybe faster than some of the other students because that's actually what I found. Uh, the Hartford Art School was huge on conceptual thinking because they were primarily a fine art school 
and for some reason the technical skill at the junior level shocked me because I understood the programs a lot more than the students who were in their third year. And I was shocked, but it really, really helped me and it actually helped me stand out because not only could I help other students, you know, who were fumbling with the program, but I actually could help the professors. And that was, you know, that's a huge shocker. And it, even all the way up into, you know, full-time position at Minson Oak, um, you know, I'm helping people left and right do simple things that, you know, you would think that they would understand how to do. So, you know, read, read those textbooks that you get, do all the tutorials you can, and just keep, you know, try to keep making it, you know, second nature when you open up those programs. I have to agree wholeheartedly with Brett on that. Um, the worst thing you can do in this industry is not keep up with the software and get left behind. It's, it's a challenge sometimes, but I would also encourage you to learn as many programs as in depth as you can, even if you're specializing in a specific area. You may not always get your first job in the area that you want. So the more education you have, the more programs you know, you can get your foot in the door. It may not be your dream job, but it could lead you there. So, you know, you may be into gaming, but don't dissuade like InDesign or Illustrator or Photoshop. They're all going to come together and play a role somewhere down the road. They, the, it's, it's invaluable and stay up on top of it. I think uh, another aspect uh, in the classes that I took here that I really see coming into play these days is when you have those group critiques, everybody starts talking about your projects. And I know it's hard sometimes because like, you don't want to say something wrong to somebody or whatever. But, you know, like, yeah, I think you said earlier, it's like if you can really share yeah. what you're thinking and just put it out there and you know, get that skill set, um, it's really helpful because there's a lot of times that uh, the project always comes out best when it's not just you that's thinking of it. You know, when you have everybody's consensus into what it is, um, projects come out the best that way. Well, sometimes you're too close to your own project too. You've been looking at it for so long, you don't necessarily see it. And so when you know a colleague or a teacher or a coworker makes a point about it, you may you may at first be taken back like you're insulted that they're criticizing your work. But sometimes it's really forcing you to look at it a different way. And I can't tell you how many times it's happened to me where I didn't see it until somebody pointed it out and said, oh my God, you're right. Uh, now I want to now I want to go back and fix it. I want to, you know. So I'll always be open to the conversation. I think one of the most important things that uh, I learned here is portfolio and resume design. Because um, that's kind of that you need that in order to even get positions and jobs and freelance in the first place. Um, definitely learning how to sell yourself as a designer is um, incredibly important and I think it would be near impossible to get jobs if you had no idea how to even sell yourself. So. Um, in terms of the classes that I've taken here, something that has actually been really helpful for me is I took a sociology course, um, which is the study of groups of people and how they work and cultural values, how they're developed. Um, and when you work in marketing, that is incredibly valuable because depending, and we've talked about this in your class too, you know, depending on where the ad is going to be shown, um, different things can mean something to different people. Um, so an ad in India is not going to look the same as an ad in America, and you have to understand the cultural values and how to tailor that to what you're making. And also, you know, um, when you're working with colors, certain colors uh, evoke certain emotions and set certain moods, and so you have to understand how that affects the psychology of a person, you know. Red is passion and anger, and blue is calming or sad. Um, so taking psychology and sociology classes were actually incredibly valuable. I would recommend those. That's great. It's good to hear a plug for some of our academic courses, too. It, it makes a well-rounded student. Um, so if there was, if you can think of anything that you wish someone had told you way back when, as you were entering the field, what would it be? Uh, you're good enough. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and just go for it, wing it, hope for the best. Um, 
I wish people had told me to be prepared for the level of communication you have to have with other people, which we've touched on about talking with uh, people in marketing and stuff, talking with clients. Um, because in school you don't really think about that too much. You're designing for, you know, you come up with the ideas your own, you're designing for a client, usually the teacher or something. Um, and there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one communication there between the teacher, but sometimes you're working with groups of people. and. Um, so yeah, I guess learning how to discuss ideas as a group and not just one-on-one -on -one is um, something that I wish I had learned. So I remember uh, looking for jobs when I first graduated and looking at all the qualifications that you needed and just feeling like, oh man, I don't think I have what it takes, you know. It was all kind of like self-consciousness a little bit, but um, the trick I did was to play upon my actual strengths that I did have and really build that up because sometimes it's not just the, the uh, just the kind of the work that you do, but it's also things like the way you work in a team, that was something I was good at. Um, let's see, uh, I'm trying to think what else, uh, I don't know, just communication skills and stuff like that. You know, play up your strengths and then really, you know, the, the willingness to learn was something that I always said every time I went to an interview. I'm like, you know, I'm here because I want to be here, and I want to, I want to see how you guys do things, and I want to learn, you know, the right way. So it was just, you know, uh, getting over that part where you always told yourself that you can't do the job was the hardest thing, and uh, but that's a good thing to consider. Listen, listen carefully to what your clients are saying, uh, or your your, your coworkers, your your salespeople. Uh, sometimes they are they are not the most visual. So their words and what they're telling you is going to be your answers. It's where you're going to get your information from. And ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, actually, I mean, I know everyone. Everyone says you know you need to make sure you you know you find your strengths. You you know you know your weaknesses. But it takes it takes a lot of courage to actually be able to understand and know who you are personally. Um, I didn't spend as much time. You know, during school, I, went, I didn't spend as much time figuring out who I was and what my real interests were, so I was jumping all over the place. It ended up working out to my advantage, but you know, I wished that I had spent more time sitting around and thinking, you know, what actually makes me happy, what actually makes me sad, what don't I like doing, what do I like doing, and what I found as I got older is that it's more important to make sure that you're constantly following your passions, and passions aren't necessarily long-term. You know, one morning you might wake up and say, hey, I want to paint today. And then another morning you might wake up and say, hey, I want to take pictures. And I think it's important, too, for as long as you can sustain that feeling, you know, go and ride that wave. And eventually you'll figure out what you keep going back to. And something that um, some people actually did to tell me, um, especially going into the comics industry, is that if you are always waiting to be good enough to apply for the job, you're never going to be good enough. Um, because you, you do need to dip your toe into that water and get that feedback and learn from other people who are better than you. Um, but you're never going to be at their level without getting into it first. So, so just go for it. This is all, the, you're inspiring me. This is great advice because I always hear from students on the other end of that that are looking for guidance in how to go about getting a job. And I'm starting to hear some of you talk about that. Back in my day, the, the word was always network, networking, Do, know, you know, form your friendships, your relationships, get to know people, put the feelers out there, get them to ask for you and so forth and so on. And I'm sure that's probably still part of it, but this is a really important piece that you're hearing, you know, to believe in yourself, I think, and to just, just go for it and see what happens, right? Does anybody want to talk about how they got their first job? This isn't necessarily on the list here, but... Sure. Actually, I, 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 the way I got it was, was through networking. I was uh, really trying to find something, I was just telling people, anybody I knew that needed web design, like, just you know, let me work for you, whatever, I'll do whatever it takes. And uh, I ended up telling a professor at Central, uh, Tina Rice, you guys might come across her sometime. She's great. She's a graduate She's from a graduate MCC. Here. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, so I, I worked with her for two days, and she's, I think she couldn't take me for some reason. Like she just, our coding styles are different. She was, I had like newer stuff, she didn't, didn't understand it. But what she ended up doing was she had a connection with the museum, and she recommended me. She heard the position. There was a guy that was in my spot before me. He went to, I think, one of the insurance agencies in Hartford. And the spot was open. Just because I happened to have spoke up and told her that I wanted to do it, she, she recommended me for the job. It was great. I'm actually uh, still at my first job right now, uh, systematic automation. But, um, I had done two years ago uh, an internship through the co-op uh, program here, and there were uh, two places that um, I had sent, you know, my re uh, got my resume sent to, and um, I went to work with one, but not the other. The other happened to be Smack Automation. Um, when I graduated from here, they actually reached out to me because they still had my resume. They were looking for a graphic designer, and they asked if I was interested in doing some freelance with them, and uh, I said yes. It started out as freelance, but it evolved into a full-time position. So. Um, for my job at the advertising agency, for my last credit, I actually did the co-op program and I got an internship there. And um, for a graduated, he wanted to hire me full time. Um, so internships are incredibly valuable because you do get to meet people and you also get some stuff to put in your portfolio that hopefully they have. They have used and that's been validated by a company and for the colorist job it was actually a lot of the networking stuff um, I had a friend who went to school of visual design in New York she had worked on a book for her friend who was an editor and when we went to New York Comic Con I met the editor we went to dinner um, I mentioned coloring she said I need a colorist for a book I'm working on and now it's getting published and I've somehow stumbled my way into published comics. So it's, oh, networking is so, so important. It's all about who you know. And then, uh, actually, it's nice that you say that because I didn't know, I didn't know I was going to get a job. Um, I was in a, I was in one of my senior classes in my BFA program and we were presenting our senior projects and I was presenting my interpretation and take on a self-help book. And I didn't realize that uh, the creative director of Mints and Hoke knew my professor and she was actually in the room when I started to present. And I didn't see that she was there, so you know, I just did it like a normal presentation in my class. And uh, afterwards, my professor told me that the creative director was interested if, or asked, wanted to know if I was interested in uh, being an intern at the ad agency. And so a couple months went by, and then after I graduated, I got a phone call. And you know, I started interning, and then it turned into freelance work, and then I got a full-time position. So it was sort of like random. You know, I had no idea what was going to happen. I kind of just stumbled upon it. So it can go, you know, it can go either way. And I would ditto the internship. We're actually, we actually have an MCC intern where I'm working now. Uh, and it gives you some real-world experience. A lot of the stuff you're doing in class, you know, you've got an assignment. And, and I'm not just waiting on the education at all because it's so important. But when you're actually in the agency or in a you know in-house group or whatever, you're actually seeing how things are working every day in the real world. And that day-to-day -day experience is going to help you get into a job because unfortunately, it's that old catch-22. You need experience to get the job, but you can't get the experience until you have it. You know. Um, so when you have an internship, that's your first lead into the real world and. That's going to make it easier because you're going to go somewhere for an interview. Say, well, I interned at so and so for six months. Now they've got somebody they can call at that agency to see, you know, what you were doing. You've got something to put in your portfolio that you've done and present, and it's not just a class project; it's a real project. Thank you. Okay, so um, we we touched upon this one, but. And uh, maybe someone would want to elaborate a little bit more. What personal skills have helped you to succeed? Organization. Um, as in one of my roles at the agency, I'm the production artist, and so a lot of the files go through me to be finalized and sent out to print. And you know, we've got people of 
you know, one year experience up to 10 or 15. And I still get files that have too many colors. Uh, the artwork is low res. It, you know, so it's, it's, it's important um, to also think of when you're in a team environment, will anybody else be able to open up your file and know what's going on? If you've got multiple layers, label your layers. Don't leave layers in there that people are never going to use. God forbid you get a file like I did, 200 layers, layer one, layer one, copy, layer one, copy, copy. Layer. <laughs> and to go through that and actually find the piece that you needed to edit, you know, think of your fellow coworkers. When they open that file, let them know exactly what's going on. Don't let them have to sit there for an hour to figure it out before you get there. Be organized, label things, learn shortcuts if it helps you. And if you learn something new and exciting, share it. Share it with the people that you work with. Yeah, that organization is definitely um, important. Um, where I work, they had um, hired different freelance designers at various stages before me. and. Um, up on the server at work, there's a, a folder that all the artwork um, for everything is, and that's pretty organized, but I'm looking at files from maybe five different designers throughout the course of, you know, everything that I, they have up there. And there's so many things that are, you know, layers that aren't labeled, um, missing links in images from you know, three years ago, that I have no idea where the image is. I, I, I still don't understand why people don't want a package. If it's an InDesign yeah. project, it makes no they sense. just do not get that that's linked to the sources. Yeah, yeah. so definitely organi organizing your own files, but also um, organizing folders you put things in is very helpful. Um, there's a format that for editing pictures in Photoshop that um, my boss prefers that I use that I really like where we have a folder that the source image is in, then a different folder that we put any Photoshop files in, and then a third folder that we put the finished edited pictures in. And so that way you can, you know, if you ever want to change something different about the picture from how it originally was, you know exactly where that was. If you need to change something that's in the Photoshop file, you can do that. So yeah, always save your layered Photoshop files before you flatten them. Because guaranteed, if you flatten it, that tomorrow you'll need to edit that file. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. Save everything. Save every <laughs> 20 minutes, if possible. More um, often than that. Yeah. Because yeah. it's really not easier <laughs> to create again once you've already done If you've done gone it. two hours on a project and you haven't saved, there is a god. <laughs> I think that leads into like file name structures. If you get the red file names on there, version one, version two. Yeah. Time, time, original yeah. level, file, file one, file two. <laughs> save, save your mysteries. Yes. You don't know how many times clients will come back and go, you know, I've been thinking about it, and I really like that design you presented two weeks ago. Yeah. Could I see that again? So don't overwrite those. Yeah. Uh, this is so important. I, it, it, half the time I'm fighting with myself to save things correctly, so in six months' time I can go back and figure out which version was it. But working in teams, that's even more of an issue that, that so thank you for highlighting that. Um, we're down to, has anything really surprised you about the field? Something you had not anticipated? Uh, personally, for me, I, I never thought that I would end up working at a museum. just never thought it. I mean, I thought they were always hard to get into, and then getting there was, was you know, like luck, like I was saying, pretty much. But um, yeah, it was, I was surprised to be able to, where that this field goes across so many different, you know, types of companies that you might be surprised where you end up. And uh, working for nonprofit too, I was surprised how much I like it. It's, it's fun and it's kind of heartwarming. It's, it's feel good. Um, I want to say, I don't know the proper word. It's not necessarily the incompetence that's sort of insulting, um, but just the lack of understanding from other clients' marketing teams about what goes into the work and what you need. I can't tell you how many 200 by 200 pixelated JPEG pictures I have gotten from clients, and I've had to go back and 
specifically tell them what I need, and I feel like it's implied, but they just have no idea. Um, and they think it's going to take three hours when really it's going to take a whole day. Um, yeah, that's definitely the thing that has surprised me the most. Um, something that surprised me a lot is um, the amount of communication I do with uh, print shops and stuff. Um, I'm the only person uh, affiliated with graphic design at, my, um, at the company I work for. So I'm also really the only person who knows anything about um, having to like print the postcards that I'm designing and stuff. So I talk a lot with the, uh, like the print shops that we work with about what um, file formats they need and stuff, but also um, my boss often has me talk to them about like when things will be printed. Um, I even do a lot of like the ordering of the postcards itself, and it's just something I never really thought that I would be involved with. Well, I want to kind of address what Mara said too, because you do run into that, that a lot of people that aren't really in this industry think that you know the low-res JPEG they got off their digital camera is going to blow up to you know the side of a truck. Uh, Unfortunately, they're never going to understand it without your teaching them. They, they're not part of this industry, and they, so you have to not only be the artist, but you have to almost be the educator and, and explain to them why this little picture isn't going to blow up to the size of a truck and try to you know, educate them as to, you know, I need an EPS file, not a JPEG. I need a transparent background because you want it on this bright blue background. You don't want a nasty little white box around. So you're not only designing, but you're also educating the people that you're working with, the clients who really have no idea what you need, how long it's going to take. And so unfortunately, I think part of that becomes our job to educate them and, and help them to understand that, you know, we don't have the little staples easy button that everything gets done in two seconds. There, sometimes you really do run into a physical impossibility. It cannot be physically done within that moment. And then, actually last, I would say that be prepared to deal with um, your relationships with your coworkers and also the relationships of other coworkers together because um, office politics are real, there is drama, and it, you'd, you'd be surprised at how sometimes you know, people will not work nicely together. It's like we're back at kindergarten and you know, people just, I don't want to work with him or I don't want to work with her for, you know, for whatever reason. And it's best just to be as diplomatic as possible and just try to be as fluid with, you know, with everybody. You know, I don't want to recommend being a people pleaser, but there will be times when you will have to cater to certain people in order to get the work done. And I mean, at the end of the day, that's kind of, that's kind of the goal. So just be prepared to deal with other personal personalities. In a way, you're kind of becoming a psychologist in a way. So it's pretty <laughs> interesting. It's good to know that that hasn't changed. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, how has your career impacted your quality of life? So the things that maybe we're looking for in terms of mentioning are the hours. We've begun to talk a little bit about how much time it takes. Um, your schedule, what's a typical week like? Do you have a personal life, a uh, family life? And, lifestyle, that kind of thing. Has, has working in the graphic design field, does that impact your social life? Most definitely not. Yeah. Deadlines are real, and they're not always reasonable deadlines. I can't tell you the number of times I've pulled an all-nighter to meet a deadline in the morning, only to have everything torn apart that morning to do it all over again for another morning meeting. It's part of the business, unfortunately, and it's just something you have to flow with. And you know, sometimes your spouses, girlfriends, boyfriends who aren't in this business don't always understand, um, you know, that your job is not strictly nine to five. Uh, there are times you're going to have to work late and it's, in, it's expected of you. Um, so try to kind of go with the flow. Find, you know, when you do have your personal time, take advantage of it. But also realize if you're put on a large project, there, there may be some late nights involved. And you can't always plan for it. Very rarely. Uh, where I work is about 45 to an hour minute drive from where I live. So every day it's like two hours of my day that I have to just travel, you know. Uh, I guess maybe that's more of general work in, uh, work in general, but um, it, you definitely, like you said, 
it impacts your social life. You kind of can't have one for a little while. You, know, you gotta budget your time really wisely <laughs> to manage it. Um, but I don't know. I had that written down here as part of the negatives, but part of the positives too was that you get to meet like like-minded people, which is a big, huge plus. You know, you get to meet people that can speak the same language as you, expand your network, uh, and really, I don't know, we have some good conversations out there with people that just know exactly what you're talking about once you get into that business. It, it's really fun. Yeah, um, it was interesting for me. Um, starting the job I'm at now because I had never even actually had a job before this and um, suddenly last uh, this past summer I was working um, typically five dot, five days a week, uh, 40 hour work week, um, had to travel 40 minutes to get to work 40, 40 minutes back. Um, so it definitely had a major impact on me going from having always free time to working like a real job. Um, but thankfully, right now, um, my boss is very understanding. I'm uh, currently taking classes here, again, uh, doing painting, oil painting, and um, he has an appreciation for art, so he's actually, he understands my passion, and um, I'm actually no longer commuting to work. I'm working from home. Um, my hours are very flexible. Usually I work all day Friday. Um, sometimes with a deadline, I have to you know, work on a day that I have class either early in the morning or, you know, in the afternoon when I get home from class. But, um, yeah, so I've had varying schedules really over the past few months, um, varying between working almost constantly to kind of having the choice kind of when, of when I want to work on things, which is very nice. Um, I think I'm a part of the generation, and I think you guys are too. I think we still think We've seen our parents work and our grandparents work their butts off, and I think we're at a point where we're sort of fighting. You know, we don't want to work all day and all night anymore. And there are going to be times when you do have to work all day and all night. And the best thing you can do is to just find the small ways to sort of to beat that expectation of the industry, because people are going to expect you to risk and sacrifice some of your personal time. And what I found best is always show up early. Um, I know when I was in school here, when I was in the art school, I became a night person. I worked primarily by night, and that's when I had all my energy, but everything kind of switched when I got into the working field, and um, I found it best to come in early and work as smartly as possible during the day so that you didn't have to stay after five. And I worked with people who were of older generations than me, and we used to get made fun of when five o'clock came around and we were ready to leave. You know, they'd be like, oh, you know, early day for you? And you know, I was like, you know, yeah, <laughs> today is an early day for me because I got all my stuff done during the day while, you know, while you guys were walking around talking and doing whatever. So just make sure you stay on top of your projects and you'll be able to get out on time. Um, I mentioned at the beginning, um, doing commercial work is the sweetest gig. Um, I have a nine to five and it has given me a sense of schedule, it has given me financial stability, I just got an apartment and I also mentioned that having that financial stability has given me the opportunity to pursue my own artistic goals which is, um, it gives me the money to go to comic book conventions. Um, it gives me the opportunity to do the colors thing where I'm getting paid 30 bucks a page, which hourly is less than what I'm working at my regular job and could not live off of. Um, yeah, I was going to say something else, but I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come yeah, the, the unreasonable deadlines. Those are definitely real. Um, for my colorist gig, I have to finish 22 pages within the span of like two weeks, maybe a week, and that's going to be a lot of all-nighters, so definitely be prepared for that. Yeah. I have one more thing too, actually. Um, what I found too is as creative people, we actually, our, our creativity infiltrates us at any point in time. So. You could be out with your friends, you know, at a bar or doing whatever with your friends, and then um, all of a sudden you're in the middle of a conversation, you get a creative idea, and 
you have to be as discreet as possible when you try to write it down or put it into your phone or something. But it's going to happen. It's going to find its way to sneak in all aspects of your life at all times. So just be ready for that. Can't tell you the time. Part of the up in the middle of the night. That's it. Yeah. That's how I want to do it. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> Okay, what advice can you give to graduates seeking employment in the graphic design field? Or the creative, let's just say creative design field. Um, I think I mentioned this before, just, just go for it um, and don't wait to be good enough because um, it's never going to happen. So just do it. Um, spend as much time as you think is necessary on your portfolio, which is probably going to be more time than you think. Um, that's you know that's your face of your work. That's the face of who you are. So it's it's best to you know spend a lot of time on that and try your you know try hard too and make sure your portfolio and the work inside of it reflects who you are. Yeah, definitely the uh, you know business card resume portfolio are uh, extremely important and you should definitely put as much time as you can into designing those and making those reflect your style of work and who you are as a designer? Uh, have a lot of confidence. You know, you really want this job, do what it takes to go get it. Just do what it takes. Yep. Go in, sell yourself, uh, know what you want to do, uh, be willing to learn whatever they want you to, and uh, present yourself and your portfolio well. Ask other people to look at your portfolio too, people that you respect, your teachers, advisors people that you work with and uh, just pursue the help. Just go for it, you know? Always have business cards on you and yeah. pretend you know what you're doing. <laughs> Even if you don't. If you don't remember InDesign, that's fine. Pretend that you do. You'll figure it out when you get there. <laughs> no, I'm going to disagree with that. <laughs> Only because having had, you know, freelancers and interns that have said, I know InDesign inside and out, and then they open up the program and they're staring at the screen and they've never touched it. So there's a there's a degree that you can sell yourself, yeah, it's a but fine don't line. sell yourself completely on something you know this much about because now you go in and you've told them you know how to do this and you really don't. So now your employer is looking at it going, hmm, what else did they tell me that isn't necessarily true? So have some information say, you know, I know a little bit about it, I'm more than willing to bone up on it, I'm more than willing to take some more classes and learn if that's what you need me to do. Don't, don't lie completely. Yeah. Never say you're an expert if you're just no. familiar with something. No. Yeah, <laughs> right? That's not what I'm trying to say. I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, do, you definitely do have to sell yourself, but sell yourself reasonably, not, you know, oversell yourself oh, for yeah. things that you really don't know, because it will come back and get you. Um, Michelle had said the, uh, the importance of having other people look at your portfolio and stuff. Um, definitely, uh, I would suggest anyone who's you know, graduating soon to uh, you know, participate in the suggested um, exit portfolio review. I found that extremely helpful, um, having you know, the eyes of people who have worked in the field before critique my portfolio and resume. It was very eye-opening and it's um, incredibly, incredibly helpful. I'm just curious, how many people plan on going to a four-year program after, after this? Um, the, reason, the reason why I say that, and I'm, I guess I'm going to be speaking to you guys specifically, uh, right now, at this point in your creative journey, I think it's most important to focus on your skills, your interests, and your craft. Um, I know everyone's probably asking you, what are you going to do for work, you know, what kind of job do you want? And when I was at this point, truthfully, I had no idea. And I didn't, you know, I, I think it's best to not, pre to not pretend that you do. Um, it's very, very important for you to go out there and figure out what opportunities and what jobs you could possibly get. But if, and I say this, I, I don't want to sound, um, I don't know, but jobs aren't always important at this point. At this particular time, I think you're not you're not going to get a job unless you are extremely good, talented, and can, and can communicate. Because there are so many people out there who are also on the same journey and trying to get to the same goal as you. So if you 
if you are going to buy yourself more time by going to another, you know, another program, maybe a four-year degree, then I would say right now, look out there, see what the op you know what the opportunities and jobs are, but focus more on on your ability and your craft and your skill, because that's what's going to land you a job in the future. It is a very competitive field. I'll tell you that. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want you to think if you're not going to do that that you're rushing, but. I'm of the opinion, and I kind of work by the philosophy, that it's best to go slow and confidently rather than rushed and unsure um, for personal reasons and even uh, professional reasons. That's great advice. Um, so, and then the last question was about internship and co-op, and it sounded to me like you guys were in agreement that those are really good things to try out at a certain point in your career. Is there, is there did anyone, I'll ask this, did anyone have a poor experience doing an internship or co-op in your, in your years as a student? What do you mean by poor? Well, yeah. <laughs> some, sometimes we hear, and I've heard, you know, way back when in my own experience, uh, uh, peers of mine would really complain about the position that they may have been placed in, it wasn't a good match, or they were being asked to fetch coffee, and, Things like that, instead of actually learning on the job, which is the purpose of an internship. Does that, have you heard of experiences like that or had an experience yourself or have, have things cleaned up a bit in terms of those kinds of? I've never fetched anybody coffee before. Um, I'm sure I've done other things in, in the same vein, but never that specifically. Um, of course, an internship in any, you know, anything really, you're gonna have your pluses and your minuses. Not everything is going to be glitz and glam and you know pretty and butterflies. There are going to be things you're going to have to do stuff you don't necessarily like, but it's up to you to decide if that outweighs the all the good stuff that's going on. But as far as a negative experience, I mean, I think even a negative experience, you think you can see the flip side and, and learn from it. Um, there was stuff. I've had to do at my job that wasn't necessarily my job. You know, I, I used to have to answer the phones and take out the trash and all that kind of stuff. And at some point, especially after I got hired, I, I had to say, I'm not your secretary. This isn't my job and I'm not going to do it. And they took the phone off my desk. <laughs> so at some point, you know, you have to draw the line because you're not there to fetch coffee for people. Um, and I think that's perfectly reasonable. Well, depending on, I've worked in really small organizations and really large organizations. And the one common thing that I think I found across the board is you're going to be asked to wear many different hats. One day you may be a graphic designer. The next day you may be doing photo research. Um, again, you may not really like everything, but it all plays into the overall career. You're going to have to do pieces of this throughout your career and maybe as the intern, yeah, you might get stuck with some of the sucky jobs or not the glamorous ones. But remember that every one of us who have been doing this also started out this way and we may not have started out with the glamorous parts of the job or, you know, uh, but each part of it is important. And just, you know, if you're, if you're in a situation in an agency and you feel like you want to be doing more, go to the people, go to, the, go to your superiors. One of the things that I don't see happening is, um, in this industry a lot, and, and not to peg young people, but you're given a job, you're done with the job, and you're just sitting there. Go to somebody, ask them, can I help you with something? Is there something I can be doing for you? Do you need to have photos looked for? Go to your superiors and say, I'd be interested in learning this, this, this program. Uh, you know, who can I sit with? Always put yourself out there, offer yourself up, because you're just going to make yourself more valuable. The more you learn, the more willing you are to help out your colleagues, it's only a plus for you. Okay. I, so I had a, an internship that was 20 hours a week, zero pay, and I was taking six classes, Oof. no time for lunch, like I couldn't even, man, I mean, I stopped at some point, get to class a little late, but, um, and it was, yeah, it was really painful, man. It was, it was not an easy thing. But luckily, the company I was working for was, they did a lot of web development there. And uh, it took what I learned, the foundation that I learned in college, which was just 
don't know if you guys have done HTML at all here. It's just HTML and CSS that you learn here, right? Which is just basic coding. And then I learned that industry stuff at this at this internship. I learned how to use the, the different backend programs that they have at like WordPress and they, they were switching over to a thing called HubSpot, which is uh, something like WordPress. And uh, I gained so much industry knowledge, industry standards from there, just working for free, and just, I don't know, learning from everybody else that was there. And then even like, I learned how people worked in an office there, and when I started applying for jobs, like I knew how I had to be when I was going there, you know, and how to talk to people. So, uh, I can't even stress how important internships are. Just the experiences you guys could get from those, you know. And it's, it's hard to get into a place without that experience, so. Definitely very beneficial stuff. Yeah, um, at my internship, there was there was a slight negative. Um, my boss who I was working for um, was not very good at getting back to me and communicating. Um, there would be times where he would, you know, we would discuss something via email, and then he would tell me that he was going to call me on a certain day at a certain time to discuss something. And he wouldn't call me. I'd email him later that day saying, you know, did you forget to call me? I received an email maybe two days later. Um, but it, the plus side from that is I wouldn't take initiative. Um, sometimes where if he said he would call me, he didn't call me, I'd wait an hour. I'd call him, he'd pick up, uh, you you know, say that he'd forgotten to call and everything, but we'd, you know, then I'd get things done, I wouldn't be waiting. So I definitely learned to take initiative um, with things during that internship. And I also learned a lot of positive things from that internship as well. Um, I saw how, because um, I worked with a, uh, a design firm, so they, I got to see how they interacted with individual clients. And that was very, very helpful for me. So. Okay, well, thank you all. I'm going to open it up to our wonderful audience and Ed Hogan. I know Ed has a couple of questions as well. And uh, we'll have a little discussion. Great. Uh, first of all, so nice to see you all again and hear that you had success. Uh, we're always looking at the programs and the courses and the programs and changing them, trying to keep them relevant. I wanted to ask you, now that you're in your professional life, have you found yourself thinking, I wish they had taught us this or had emphasized something more? Anything like that that we can use to, uh, to help our future students? The only thing that comes to my mind right off the bat is, uh, I noticed that in a lot of the classes that I took, the final project or the piece was looked at by the teachers and critiqued by your fellow students. I'd like to see the files looked at more. Only coming from the end that I'm seeing a lot of people's files. You know, you have no idea until you open up a file that, oh my god, this is a two-color job and I've got 12 colors in here. What am I going to do? Okay. I think that if the files could be looked at and more um, emphasis put on file preparation and and the you know best practices would help in the real world. Yeah, I think file preparation is actually an, um, an important thing, and also kind of going over preparing files for printing specifically, because mm -hmm. um, yeah. that was something I never I learned slightly, um, you know, with like bleeds and um, a little bit like that, but there's certain things that I've had to research, um, specifically like different stock options and stuff like that, knowing what type of thing is appropriate for what type of job. Um, so yeah, kind of just printing prep. I would say, uh, I think right now what I see happening in the ad industry is uh, a lot of firms and agencies and whatnot, they're all starting to do a lot of video work. And I'm not necessarily sure how much video, I don't know if you have any video programs, I, I don't yeah. know what the courses are like, what the courses are like, but I'd say emphasize and push video as an understanding of optics and cameras and as much as you possibly can. Because I know that Vincent Hoke right now, um, they're slowly starting to transition into doing as much video work as possible. Um, two things I would 
like to see more emphasis on. One is the, we talk about, a lot about communication skills, um, which I, I don't think some people understand and that they're going to need a lot of that. And like I said, um, going to the sociology course has really helped me in terms of communication, but also in terms of making my ads. Um, the other thing which I think is even more important is marketing. Um, especially if a lot of people go into freelance, um, is understanding how to make your own promotional material, um, you know, networking, uh, pricing yourself, um, how to get freelance work. Uh, I think that would be a really, really important thing to emphasize in the graphic design program. Um, I don't know, I don't remember what. I'm not really too sure what's being offered here now, but uh, maybe just some, you know some of the industrial standards that are out there. Maybe a little bit more of a taste of it in the classes, like the like using like uh, the CMS systems that I've used before in web in a web class or something like that. But you know, I know it's hard because I mean, taking these classes, you're learning so much. I don't know how much more you cram into them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe a little bit more industrial taste. You know, what's going on there? Thank you. Questions? Yes. Right. So having people who uh, went to the workforce right out of MCC and gone to four-year programs, what do you suggest? Like continue your learning or just like, getting a job as soon as possible? Do you guys hear that? Or? No, can you say that again? Oh, okay. So having people that have graduated right out of MCC and went to the workforce mm -hmm. and having people who have gone to four-year programs, what do you suggest? Continuing your education or going right in, like getting a job taken off? I, mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I would say that it's probably best. I mean, it's whatever is best for you. And I mean, it, if you have time and if you, you know, if you want to continue your education and further your learning, then I think yeah, that's definitely what you should be doing. If you, if you want to get out and be independent and maybe um, sort of keep going up, you maybe you want to get out of your parents' house, then yeah. Then, I would say, you know, jump into the field as soon as you can. It's, you know, it's all about what you want. You can always continue your education while you're working too. I've done it. Yes. Yeah. Um, Sometimes you you need to be working and you don't have that choice. So you know, if you want to continue your education, continue it doesn't always have to be on a full time basis. Yeah, uh, I took the two year program and then I immediately went into the workforce. Um, Like he said, it's, it really depends on you if you think that you can swing it in the workforce and maybe don't necessarily need that, the structure of more education, then go for it. Uh, for me, it was a lot of, I couldn't afford more education and I was in a position where I needed to get out of the house and um, just sort of get into it. Um, but and, yeah, you can totally do programs while you're working or just, you know, personally on your own time, look up tutorials when you're home. Uh, I'm doing a lot of that as of right now, brushing up on my InDesign skills and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then you can also get scholarships. Uh, and that's, that's really sweet. Um, yeah, it's whatever you want. Um, also, I I don't want to sound like a pessimist or a downer, but I, I've i never seen somebody come into Minson Hoak for an interview that only had a two-year degree. Um, some agencies and some firms may run differently and they may hire different people, but I would say the more education and the more skill you have, the better job you're going to get. Yeah. Uh, one of the benefits of going to forward school is actually those other classes that you have to take. Um, whether it's more marketing classes or maybe a, a history class or a writing class especially. I mean, you're going to get more education. It's only going to benefit you. And you're, when you become an employee somewhere, they're going to want to see how well-rounded you are, how, how many skills you have. So, you, know, you go to four year school, you're only just getting more skills, you know. So, go with it. Good. Thank you. I have a similar question, it's kind of along the same vein. 
what would what do you think employers now are looking for more experience or more education? I'm kind of in a unique situation where I've been interning in the graphic design field for about a year with the company, and I'm looking towards graduation at the end of next semester. And there's potential that I might get hired full time, so I have to make a big decision about whether to go right into the workforce or continue my education. So I'm trying to figure out what is more more valuable experience or education. Why does it have to be either or? I mean, yes, I mean, you could definitely go into the four year, but if you have an opportunity at a job that you like, that you really see potential to increase your skills or to be able to branch out into different areas, maybe take the job and continue your education on a part time basis. Mm -hmm. You can always go back to school full time anytime you want. That's true. You know? That's what I did. I was working as an art director. I had my four year already, uh, and I decided I wanted to get my master's. So I left my job as an art director because in my mind at that time, I really felt like I could not be a creative person all day long, 40 plus hours a week, and devote the kind of learning that I wanted to do with a master's program at the same time. So I became a waitress for two years and went to school. And then I and then and then I got hired here. Oh. And I had no plan to go into teaching. In your case specifically, um, if you're going to be hired full time um, in the same position, um, I I would say, sure why not? As long as that position has room for you to grow and keep going higher because you don't want to get into a dead end, you know, and end up wasting time because could have went to school to get maybe another higher up position. So it really all depends on what you're doing. And if the employer supports furthering your education, which a lot of them nowadays do, another plus. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? <laughs> Alex? Um, like in the field, do you find that um, the knowledge of you know like hard coding with HTML and CSS? Do you find that there's a gap between people who only know like you know Satan Design or some of the more user-friendly programs and like those who actually know how to like code it and and like put it out there? Do you see the, like a distinction between those like levels of skill? Uh, I think what I've seen is that the better high paying jobs actually tend to be large organizations where they hire somebody for just a particular skill as opposed to like a, a mixture of both. So I know of agencies that are just people, have people that just do the coding, where a graphic designer will do the designing and then the design will be handed off to them and it was coded up. So uh, for high paying jobs, yeah, definitely specializing is a good way to go. But where I work at the museum, which is just one marketing department, a small marketing department, uh, the mixture has helped me because I do a lot of both. I do a lot of the coding and I do a lot of graphic design. I guess there's no real answer to that, <laughs> but uh, there's the opportunity for both, I guess. It's, it's the many hats syndrome. Yeah. You're going to be asked to do many things, especially if you're working in a smaller company where they don't have specific people for coding or people for designing print or mobile or whatever. Um, you work in a smaller agency, quite frequently you're not only the coder, you're the designer, you're the developer. It's, you know, the more skills you have, the, the more marketable you are. I definitely don't think that it hurts to have more skills. I've especially seen in freelance, a lot of people ask me about uh, web design and it's not just the graphics, they kind of want you to be able to create some of the functionality for the website and I have to tell them, no, I don't do that. And uh, at my job, I am fortunate enough where we have a tech guy and I design it and pass it off to him and say, not my monkey, not my circus. Um, <laughs> but it definitely doesn't hurt to at least be familiar with it because, yeah, you will have to wear many hats, um, especially if you work for a smaller company. Yeah, it's definitely um, 
helpful because I was originally um, hired just to do you know the print media sort of thing, advertisements, postcards. Um, but and the guy who works on our website is also in our uh, marketing department. He kind of just does the you know website maintenance and updates it every now and then. But sometimes he'll have questions um, where he doesn't know how to do something. And since my small knowledge that I have of HTML5, sometimes I can help. And that's you know it's good for me. It's good for the company as well. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Oh. Hi, Evan. You can probably just talk right out. You have a big booming voice. <laughs> Do you know where the fields is going in the graphic design world? <laughs> you know, I know that's a broad that's question, a, but no. in different fields, of course. I, mean, I swear that the same print is dying, but it's not. It's never going to die. I and mean, there are people that do print out there, so. I think it's so ever changing. It's so hard to predict, but it's definitely much more digital, much more mobile, I think, than it was. I agree, print's never going to die, but its position in the marketplace has declined. Um, you know, even with big corporations, much more of it is online materials that you can download and print yourself rather than. You know, you're going to go in and pick up a brochure or a flyer. There's still a need for it, but I think it's definitely going much more to the web and the digital era. Um, a lot of it now, and I think it's it's pushing more into this field of social media, mm -hmm. and yeah, absolutely, like mobile apps on phones and tablets, stuff like that, um, is becoming a big thing, and I think it's only going to become bigger. Yeah, it's really a matter of whatever you're doing, it's going to find you. So if you're on, if you're driving, you're still going to see billboards. If you're on your tablet or your cell phone, you're going to see graphic design there. It's, no matter where you are, you're going to see it. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, the digital side is definitely growing, but I don't think the physical and print media side is, it's getting a little smaller, but it's definitely still, still there. Um, so I think as a, as a whole, graphic design is just broadening um, what, you know, in definition. So we're in the middle of a, a program revision ourselves in graphic design, as Ed, Ed mentioned this, I think, already. We're thinking of adding courses in UI and UX design. Is that something that you, I'm seeing some heads, yes. heads nod. That would be a good thing for us. Other questions? All right. Well, thank you, everyone. That was wonderful. I learned stuff. I wrote stuff down. Terrific. Thank you very much for coming. Carl Ochnio out of our uh, career placement office put this together. Thank you, Carl. Ed Hogan, Program Coordinator for Computer Game Design, Multimedia, and Graphic Design over here. And I think I forgot to introduce myself earlier. I'm Maura O'Connor, Professor of Graphic Design here at MCC. You guys know me. All right. Maura. That's it? Got yeah, one quick thing. Yeah. Um, I would encourage you also to look at, like, trade organizations in your area. Like, you know, like uh, University of Hartford has an Adobe Users Group that meets every month. There's a great organization in Hartford called the Independent Creative Club of Greater Hartford. It's designers, copywriters, photographers. Networking is really important, but also learning from your peers and keeping in that industry and seeing what people are doing helps keep you a little bit sharper, too. Right. And most of these organizations are free or charge for like certain events. Right, I was going to mention also the Connecticut Art Directory yes. Club. And it's the you become a member, but they have a special very low price student membership. Yes. Uh, the resources that can offer you are tremendous. Yeah, and attend some of the ad club events, especially like their yearly show, you'll you'll see some of the most amazing work going on out in the marketplace. And you know, it's if for no other reason just to be inspired. Thank you. Professor Yes, Carmen. Uh, terrific job, MC. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of cookies back here. <laughs> <laughs> you jam them in your pocket, take them home to your friends, stuff your turkey.
already given so much of your time and really terrific it's great to see you all again thank you